Hello, welcome, Michael Corrin Show. And no commentary tonight. Usually I do my stand-up to camera and I, I give you pearls of wisdom quite spontaneously, uh, but not this evening because too many pearls of wisdom uh, on the show itself. Now, we have... Um, I've been mentioning a special show coming up on this particular evening. You may have read it was uh, revealed exclusively uh, in the National Post on Saturday that uh, our guest is someone who seldom uh, gives uh, interviews. This is an exclusive interview in Canada. While he's here, he's just come from Yale University where he gave a lecture. There were uh, protests and demonstrations and security is an issue because the man we're about to interview, um, I think quite innocently, we'll find out, drew a cartoon 2005 that led to international protests, more than 100 people died, um, embassies attacked, buildings stormed, arson attacks and so on. Uh, a cartoon causing such a fuss. The cartoons of Muhammad that appeared those years ago that sent the Islamic world into uh, well, mass displeasure, shall we say? Two people on the show tonight. Uh, let's introduce them. Uh, Kurt Vestergaard, cartoonist. Welcome to you, sir. Thank you. And uh, with him, Lars Hedegaard, president of the International Free Press Society. Welcome to you. Thank you. The story is an extraordinary one. Uh, you drew a cartoon of Muhammad mm. uh, with a, a bomb as his turban. Yes. Why did you do this? Well, uh, I did it for the, for the freedom of expression. Um, I would say that a cartoon is uh, an idea with a line around it. And normally, a cartoon in the newspaper lives only 24 hours and then we have got to make a new one because the old one has no more actuality mm -hmm. but sometimes it happens that the topic for the cartoon is of a very universal character and um, this cartoon it's topic was freedom and if there is something that there are very different opinions about in the global village, village it is freedom mm. now there were a number of cartoons but yours I suppose well no is the most famous the most infamous w were you asked to draw it by the newspaper where it was published or did you volunteer it well I volunteered and um, I didn't talk with anybody. I just made it. It was, in the first place, for me, it was just another day at the office, as you say. Did you have any idea, any notion, that this cartoon will be the leading cartoon <coughs> of the group that would cause massive international reaction, which is still occurring? No, I didn't. Are you sorry you drew the cartoon? I'm sorry. No, 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 not at all. But uh, of course, there were consequences which I couldn't uh, couldn't know. Mm. As a, you spoke about the casualties, and um, <clears throat> and for these casualties in far away countries, I don't think I or the newspaper can be blamed uh, can be blamed or have any responsibility. These riots in the streets, I think, they were staged by regimes who cannot fulfill their population's needs. So to divert their attention from the daily problems, to give way for frustration and aggressions, mm. these, um, these riots were staged. staged. Just, just on a personal note, though, uh, just last year three men were arrested for allegedly plotting to kill you. Yeah. You have police protection in Denmark. Yeah. On a personal level, do you wish... I remember interviewing Salman Rushdie, and he said to me he, he wished he'd never written satanic verses. Did you ever say, I wish I'd never drawn that cartoon? No, no. No, I, I don't regret anything. And I don't... I will not excuse anything. Uh, I have one advantage. I'm an old man, and uh, at my age, there's not so much at stake and um, I think simply I have just done my job it is my job to be a cartoon and perhaps now and then make controversial things so and uh, you know the police protection well for somebody 
for some it would be symbols of uh, fear and horror, but for me it is uh, a symbol of, um, of safety and security. And uh, the PET, as it is called in Denmark, Politiets Efterretningstjeneste, its initials is, uh, is PET, so we uh, call them our pets. These are, the, these, are, these are the people who yeah, guard you. Yeah, yeah. yes, yes. H had you ever uh, commented in a cartoon on Islam in the past? Was it a particular issue of interest to you? Yes, I have, um, I have commented on Islam in the past. And uh, I was aware that if you have a religious topic in your cartoon, then there may be troubles. There may, but because then you really touch people's feelings. I have also, by Christians, been accused of being blasphemous. I remember I made a cartoon once about uh, Christianity and capitalism. It was not really, a, it was not my opinion, but it was an illustration. And on the cartoon, you see uh, Jesus walk away from the cross. He's dressed in an Armani suit. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the cross, <coughs> there is a, a poster on which you can read uh, available Sunday uh, service, service hours, Sundays, uh, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., um, uh, 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. So, and I, I was very, um, I liked this cartoon mm -hmm. very much. And uh, now I have updated it. So you see, in, in out to the right, you see an imam who looks like if he's thinking, "How does he do it? How does he do it?" Jesus. Yeah. Now, this is an interesting comparison because there are cartoons attacking Christianity all the time, mm. and often they're far more severe than what you just described. The reaction of Christians tends to be, "We don't like it. Maybe it's blasphemous." an angry letter. Yeah. I've never heard of Christians burning buildings down, no, no. killing people. Yeah. Has that been your experience? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, it was exactly my meaning. It was uh, an illustration. And uh, when I illustrate something, I have got to um, follow the writer's intentions. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you about the, the chronology of all this, because uh, there seemed to be a, a, a gap, a, a time gap, between the cartoons being drawn yeah. and the reaction. Yeah. And it seems to me they were actually, that they appeared uh, and no one particularly reacted to them. Yeah. Suddenly there was a concerted campaign. Yes, and there was a democratically very correct demonstration by Muslims in uh, Copenhagen in the streets. I think there was about 3,000 Muslims in the streets. Mm -hmm. But then the, the Imams, they went to the Middle East. Right. And With then some pictures that had never been published by anyone. Well, let me ask you, yeah. we'll come, come back, we've got the whole yeah. show. Um, there was some distortion because I, at least what I've read is that of the cartoons that were uh, distributed, some had been made up by other people. And there was even a photograph, uh, I think a French photograph of a man dressed as a pig. And, right. it, and it was some sort of strange pig squealing contest in France. squealing contest, right. a yearly event in okay. some, some village in France. That's the French uh, for you. But it had nothing to do with Islam. None. But it was, then, <coughs> it was then depicted as being an attack upon the Muslim faith. And there was another even uglier thing that uh, I won't even describe here of a sexual nature. So they brought along uh, so-called cartoons and pictures claiming that these had been printed or disseminated in, in, in Denmark. That was never the case.